بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم I will discuss about uh, the ascending traps or sensory traps ascending or sensory traps we can divide uh, sensory traps into four groups so four groups of the sensory tract ascending tract first one is dorsal column medial then distal system dorsal column medial then distal system the second one is anterolateral system anterolateral system third is spinocerebellar tract spinocerebellar tract and the fourth group is miscellaneous fourth group is miscellaneous so four groups dorsal column medial then distal system second one is anterolateral system third one is spinocerebellar tract and the fourth group is miscellaneous miscellaneous group uh, including uh, the spinotactal spinoreticular spino olivary and visceral afferent pathway visceral afferent pathway i discussed first about the dorsal column medial then distal system dorsal column medial then distal system so this uh, tract is also called the dorsal column tract dorsal column tract this tract has got three important features three important features the first one is it consists of large myelinated nerve fibers which are fast conducting so it consists of large nerve fibers which are myelinated and fast conducting and the velocity may be 110 meter per second velocity may be 110 meter per second the second feature is that in this tract there is marked spatial orientation marked spatial orientation or localization so marked spatial orientation or localization and third feature of this tract is that sensations carried by this tract require perception of fine grades of intensity right so perception of impulses of this tract require fine grades of intensity fine grades of intensity so these are the three features of the dorsal column medial and distal system keep in mind that this tract is present in the dorsal right column of the spinal cord present in the dorsal right column of the spinal cord these sensations are carried by this tract fine touch fine touch two point tactile discrimination two point tactile discrimination phasic pressure phasic pressure vibration vibration proprioception proprioception and stereognosis stereognosis so impulses of these sensations are carried by the dorsal column tract fine touch two point tactile discrimination phasic pressure vibration proprioception and the uh, stereognosis stereognosis so when we discuss uh, a sensory tract we discuss as first order nerve fibers 
second order nerve fibers, third order nerve fibers, and finally, termination in the cerebral cortex. Finally, termination in the cerebral cortex. So first order nerve fibers, second order, third order nerve fibers, and finally, termination in the cerebral cortex. First order nerve fibers carrying impulses enter the spinal cord through the posterior nerve root. Through the posterior nerve root. And these nerve fibers enter the posterior white column, dorsal white column. These enter the posterior white column or dorsal white column and ascend, ascend without crossing over, ascend in the dorsal white column without crossing over. The tract is formed, the tract is formed in the lower part of the spinal cord. If there are no crossing over and the tract ascends in the dorsal white column and the tract starts in the lower part of spinal cord. As the tract ascends, fibers from the upper part of the body are added laterally. As the tract ascends, fibers from the upper part of the body are added laterally. So from the lower parts of the body, nerve fibers are medial. From the upper parts of the body, the nerve fibers are lateral. From the sixth thoracic segment of the spinal cord, from the sixth thoracic segment of spinal cord, a septum appears. A septum appears in the tract to divide it into two parts. To divide it into two parts, the medial one fasciculus gracilis, the medial one, fasciculus gracilis, and the lateral one, fasciculus cuneatus, gracilus and cuneatus. The medial one is fasciculus gracilis, and the lateral is fasciculus cuneatus. Fibers from the lower parts of the body will be in the fasciculus gracilis, while the nerve fibers from the upper parts of the body will be in the fasciculus cuneatus. So these two fascicula ascend in the spinal cord to enter the medulla oblongata. So these two fascicula ascend in the spinal cord to enter the medulla of the data. Right. And then in the medulla of the data, these fascicula, gracilis and cuneatus, synapse with the corresponding nuclei. Synapse into the corresponding nuclei. Which nuclei? Nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. Nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. From these two nuclei, gracilis and cuneatus, second order nerve fibers arise. So from these nuclei in the medulla of the data, second order nerve fibers arise. And these nerve fibers are called internal arcuate fibers. Are called internal arcuate fibers. These internal arcuate fibers cross over to the opposite side. These cross over to the opposite side to form sensory decussation. So these cross over to the opposite side to form sensory decussation in the middle of the data and after crossing
possible hook. These fibers join the medial lemniscus. They join the medial lemniscus. So from the nucleus, gracilus and cuneatus, second order nerve fibers arise. These fibers are called internal alkyl fibers. These cross over to the opposite side to join the medial lemniscus. Medial lemniscus ascends in the brainstem, ascends in the brainstem, and is joined by, is joined by nerve fibers carrying same impulses from the head and face area. Joined by nerve fibers carrying same impulses from the head and face area. So these impulses are actually coming from the trigeminal part. So nerve fibers from the trigeminal pathway, these join the medial lemniscus and then this lemniscus, it ascends into the thalamus, where in the thalamus, the main tract fibers synapse into ventral, postural, lateral, nucleus of the thalamus. So main tract fibers, the synapse, synapse into the ventral, postural, lateral nucleus of the thalamus. Ventral, postural, lateral nucleus of the thalamus. The fibers coming from trigeminal pathway, these synapse into ventral, postural medial. Keep in mind, the fibers coming from the trigeminal pathway, these synapse into ventral postromedial nucleus of the thalamus. So VPL, ventral postrolateral nucleus, VPM, ventral postromedial nucleus, VPL receives nerve fibers of the main tract, VPL. VPM receives nerve fibers from the trigeminal pathway from the head and face area. So from VPL and VPM, third order nerve fibers arise. From VPL and VPM, third order nerve fibers arise, which pass through the internal capsule, which pass through the internal capsule to terminate into the somatic sensory area to terminate into the somatic sensory area in the cerebral cortex. So third of order nerve fibers arise from VPN and VPN. And these pass through the internal capsule, posterior limb of the internal capsule is passed to terminate into the somatic sensory area, somatic sensory area in the cerebral cortex. Right? So this is the pathway of the dorsal column medial lemniscal system. Right? Some fibers from nucleus cuneatus. These go to these are called posterior external arcuate fibers or cuneocerebellar fibers. These go to the cerebellum. So some of the fibers arising from nucleus cuneatus. These fibers are called posterior external arcuate fibers. Posterior external arcuate fibers from nucleus cuneatus. These go to the cerebellum as cuneocerebellar tract. These go to cerebellum as cuneocerebellar tract. So it means from this tract, proprioceptive impulses, these go to cerebellum. From this tract, that is the medial dorsal core medial lemniscal system, and proprioceptive impulses go to the cerebellum through the cuneo cerebellar tract. Right. This is the pathway of the dorsal core medial lemniscal system. We discussed as first order nerve fibers, then second order nerve fibers, 
and third coronal fibers, and then termination into the cerebral cortex in this very sensitive area. Right? Now, if there is region of the tract in the spinal cord, the sensory loss will be ipsilateral. If the region is in the spinal cord, the sensory loss will be in the ipsilateral side, same side. And if the region is of this tract is in the medial lambiscus, medial lambiscus or higher, then the sensory loss will be contralateral. So region of the medial lambiscus, it results into sensory loss on the contralateral, on the contralateral side. This was about the dorsal column medial lambiscus system, very important ascending tract or sensory tract. Now the second sensory tract is the anterolateral system. Anterolateral system. Anterolateral system. Now, this mainly includes the spinothalamic tract. It mainly includes the spinothalamic tract. And to that system has three important features. Three important features of this tract. This tract consists of myelinated and relatively slow conducting nerve fiber. So this tract is composed of myelinated, relatively slow conducting nerve fibers having a velocity of conduction, say, 40 meter, 40 meter per second, 40 meter per second. The second property is, of this tract is, that there is no marked spatial orientation. No marked spatial orientation and local localization. No marked spatial orientation and localization. And the third property is that sensations perceived as carried by this tract do not require perception of fine grades of intensity. Okay? So those sensations which are carried by this tract don't require, not require perception of fine grades of intensity. Say pain impulse, pain sensation, <coughs> thermal sensation, these don't require perception of fine grades of intensity. So these are the three features of the anterolateral system, which includes mainly the spinothalamic tract. So two types of spinothalamic tract two types, ventral or anterior spinothalamic tract and then lateral spinothalamic tract. So two types of the tracts in the spinothalamic tract, anterior or ventral and then the lateral spinothalamic tract. So first I discuss about the anterior or ventral spinothalamic tract anterior or ventral spinothalamic tract. Sensations carried by the ventral or anterior spinothalamic tract. Crude touch, crude touch, pressure, crude touch, pressure, tickle and itch, tickle and itch, and sexual sensation sexual sensation. So ventral or antispinothalamic tract it carries crude touch, pressure, tickle and itch, and sexual sensation. Sexual sensation. First order nerve fibers, first order nerve fibers carrying these impulses enter the spinal cord to the 
dorsal nerve root. So the dorsal nerve root, first order nerve fibers enter the spinal cord. And these synapses, these synapses with second order neurons, these synapses with second order neurons in the lamina 5 and 6. In the lamina 5 and 6. So first order nerve fibers carrying these impulses enter the spinal cord through the posterior nerve root. And these synapses with lamina 5 and 6 in the posterior gray column of the spine. So these synapses into lamina 5 and 6 in the posterior gray column of the spinal cord. Uh, we discussed uh, in the previous lectures that the spinal cord frame matter is divided into nine lamina. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? And lamina five and six, the uh, ventral spinal thalamic tract, the synapse. Lamina five and six. From lamina five and six, second order nerve fibers arise. From lamina five and six, second order nerve fibers arise and these cross over to the opposite side. These cross over to the opposite side to enter the anterolateral white corner of the opposite side to form the trap. So from neurons in lamina 5 and 6, second order nerve fibers arise which cross over to the opposite side to enter the anterolateral white column of the opposite side to form the trap, to form the trap. So crossing over occur of the second order nerve fiber and the tract is formed on the opposite side. The tract is formed in the lower part of spinal cord. The tract is formed in the lower part of spinal cord and as the tract ascends, <coughs> Fibers from the upper parts are added medially. You understand? This crossing over of the second order nerve fiber to the opposite side. And as the tract ascends, fibers from the upper parts are added. These are added lateral. So these are added medially. Right? So lateral will be fibers from the lower parts and medial will be the fibers from the upper part. So keep in mind, in the ventral spinal thalamic tract, fibers from the lower parts will be lateral, while fibers from the upper parts of the body will be medial. So lateral the fibers from the lower parts, and medial will be fibers from the upper parts. The tract ascends in the anterolateral white column to enter to enter the medulla of the to enter the medulla of the to enter the medulla of the now in the medulla of the gate the tract joins the spinal lemniscus it joins the spinal lemniscus so in the medulla of the gate the, the ventral spinothalamic tract, it joins the spinal lemniscus. This spinal lemniscus consists of three tracts. So three tracts join to form spinal lemniscus. Ventral spinothalamic, ventral spinothalamic, lateral spinothalamic, lateral spinothalamic, and spinotectal, spinotectal. These three tracts these join to form the spinal lemniscus. The tract in the spinal lemniscus ascends to the brainstem, ascends to the brainstem, and joined by nerve fibers carrying same impulses from the trigeminal part. In the brainstem, the tract is joined by nerve fibers carrying same impulses from the trigeminal pathway. 
these impulses are from the head and face level. Right? So the track ascends to range them, to enter the thalamus, to enter the thalamus. In the thalamus, the main tract fibers synapse, synapse into VPL. What is VPL? Ventral, postural, lateral, nucleus of the thalamus. So VPL, so the main tract fibers synapse into VPL, ventral, postal, lateral nucleus. And the nerve fibers from the trigeminal pathway, nerve fibers from the trigeminal pathway, these synapse into VPM, these synapse into VPM, that is ventral, postal, medial nucleus. So the main tract fibers synapse into VPL, by the fibers from trigeminal, trigeminal pathway, these synapse into VPM, into VPM, right? Third order nerve fibers arise. Third order nerve fibers arise from VPL and VPM, from VPL and VPM, and these pass, these pass through the posterior limb of internal capsule. These pass to the posterior limb of the internal capsule to terminate, to terminate into cerebral cortex, into the somatic sensory area. So third order nerve fibers arise from VPL and VPU. These pass through the posterior limb of the internal capsule to terminate into somatic sensory area in the cerebral cortex. So this is the pathway of the ventral spinothalamic tract having three order neurons, first order neurons, second order, and keep in mind there is crossing over of the second order nerve fibers right, in the spinal cord to the opposite side. Right? So keep in mind if there is region of this tract in the spinal cord, then the sensory loss will be on the contralateral side. If the region is in the spinal cord, then the sensory loss will be on the contra lateral side because it is crossing over of second order nerve fibers in the spinal cord. So some of the fibers from the ventral spinothalamic tract, these also go to the reticular cord. Some of nerve fibers from the ventral spinothalamic tract, these also go to the reticular reticular formation. So this was about the ventral or anterior spinothalamic tract which is included in the anterolateral system of the sensory tract. So we continue next time about the